my colleagues and I at IBM Research have been trying to develop intelligent systems that can profile, financially profile people, individuals who typically don't have any access to financial services. The key observation that we made was that you really can't superimpose the risk assessment and credit scoring systems that you find in the, 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 the developed world and other markets onto the continent because the types of data sets that we see are fundamentally different. You know, you're not going to find credit card reports or bank statements. You're more likely to find innovations such as mobile money and cell phone behavior that you can hopefully use to profile and credit score people. For the last few years, we've been leveraging this type of data source to build an intelligent uh, system that's able to leverage the airtime usage and um, mobile money transactions that, that people naturally generate to be able to develop a credit score and credit limit. This solution has been deployed with, with a bank um, here in East Africa, and it scored close to 2 million people. These are people who typically didn't have any access to financial services. We apply machine learning algorithms, and we've developed statistical models that's able to differentiate uh, good and bad customers based on features such as airtime usage, you know, mobile money, location, and, and so on. And during this exploration, um, we came across what I think is really the crux of the problem, which, which really revolves around data and identity. When we think about how can we enable people to access services, whether it's financial, education, healthcare, it really comes down to, it really comes down to data and identity. Recently, um, in the last few weeks, in fact, there's been much publicity around some of the incidents and, and cases around how our data is being misused and, 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 and shared uh, without a lot of people's knowledge. Um, when you couple this with some new progressive regulation that's coming in, um, examples are um, the General Data Protective Regulation Act um, that, that's being enforced in, in, in other parts of the world. There is an opportunity here for us to reinvent, reimagine, um, and, and, and think about how we can potentially create a digital identity for tomorrow and enable people to control their own data so they're able to access services. This is incredibly important for the continent, simply because hundreds of millions of people don't have any form of formal identity. Right? Globally, 1.5 billion people are without identity, and it's been shown to have significant impact um, on, on, on the GDP. As I mentioned, during our explorations, we, we've also thought about how can we address this problem? And we've come across technologies like blockchain, and blockchain has some very interesting properties um, it's a new way, as you've heard in the last few days, it's a new way to decentralize and digitize data and securely share it. Um, so you can see this, this having a fundamental role when we think about how to decentralize uh, data and enable people to, to control it. Since 2017, um, we've taken what I believe are our first steps in developing a digital identity that can be used here on the continent. Our solution is able to leverage some of these microdata that I've been talking about, transaction information, mobile money, to create a profile uh, for, 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 for individuals and, and businesses. Since um, November 2017, we've deployed this solution and we've um, extended it to a couple of hundred SMEs. And this is an important segment because they're the economic engine of the continent. Moving forward, um, while this is a first step in what I think is a very long road, um, it can provide the blueprint to enable um, access to other financial services, ranging from healthcare to financial services. Thank you very much.